welcome you back. The Power Performance is brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott. Ian Eagle along with Jason Horowitz. He is the NFL insider on the NFL Today. has been a great addition to the program that airs on CBS each and every Sunday. He is Charlie Casserly, who joins us right now on the Power Performances. Charlie, it's Ian and Jason. How you doing? Hey, uh, great to be with you guys. Yeah, it's great to have you, Charlie. I'll see you on Sunday. He's also streaming video, by the way, on the uh, post-game show on oh, CBS. Oh, that's Sports right. Line. You, Pat Kerwin, and Charlie that's Casserly right. every Sunday and on CBS Sports And he's added Sports a lot Line. to that show as well. He's so. multimedia right now. <laughs> Charlie is uh, getting around. You, you know him, obviously. You, you guys are the ones that are multimedia. Yeah. You guys are all over Keep the place, not me. <laughs> Keep it low, Charlie. We, we don't want anyone blowing the whistle on us. Uh, your years with the Washington Redskins and, of course, the Houston Texans, and uh, it really has been a, a great segment throughout the season on the NFL Today, you and James Brown. And one of the big stories uncovered this past week, and I know you've gotten some phone calls about it, I'm sure, in regards to the New England Patriots, the fallout after the Miami Dolphins and the Patriots story came out that the Dolphins were able to get some footage uh, in order to uh, maybe pick up some, some things on Tom Brady. And you broke the story that, hey, maybe New England isn't completely innocent in all of this, that they've gone and made some things happen behind the scenes. Fill us in on the information that you had for those who didn't catch it this past Sunday. Yeah, well, the uh, the Patriots got caught with uh, somebody in uh, coaching attire uh, on their sidelines. It was it was outside the coaching box. Coaching boxes from I think the 32 to the 32. It doesn't make any difference if you're in the coaching box or not. You can't have a video camera and you can't be videotaping the game. And uh, you know, presumably, it was to get the other teams. Uh, signals, uh, whether it's the signals from the sidelines or whether uh, they have a, a microphone that can pick up the quarterback's uh, signals, uh, it doesn't make any difference. So, uh, you know, they were warned, and if, uh, if it happens again, uh, uh, they'll be disciplined, is what my understanding is. Uh, Charlie, what have the Patriots said about the situation? Because what, from what I read, the Patriots said that they, they haven't heard from the NFL. Well, there was a memo sent out to all the teams in the league uh, so presumably they got that memo, and, and I just had sources that told me they were specifically told uh, not to do it again. And uh, the Patriots have, uh, uh, you know, denied it and then uh, say they haven't heard from the league. But, uh, you know, I, I stand by my story. I have no issue with my story. Uh, I have multiple sources on this. Charlie, let's uh, get into the games themselves. And, you know, the question this year, uh, the balance of power, AFC, as we hit now the final two weeks of the regular season, playoff spots are on the line, and a lot of quality teams fighting for those spots. Meanwhile, in the NFC, while there are questions that still need to be answered, uh, there are a bunch of teams that might back their way into the playoffs because, let's face it, who wants those final two spots in the NFC postseason? Let's start with the AFC. Uh, how do you see it all shaping up as you break down the schedules and, and take a look at, at which teams may emerge when the smoke clears in the AFC? Well, I don't have the schedules in front of me, but what I said with Jason uh, on our show Sunday was uh, Denver. Mm -hmm. And I, I spent yesterday watching tape at NFL Films, and I specifically wanted to look at Denver. And Jay Cutler, and he's improved dramatically. Now, I think with Plummer, they would have beaten Arizona anyway. They're a the better team than Arizona. But the things Jay Cutler did in progression from his first start to now, as far as his poise, uh, his overall managing the game, um, he can make all the throws. Uh, they're, they're really testing him on the arm strength. They're stretching the field, uh, which is great because you can pick up 20 yards in one shot. Uh, they're home uh, this week with Cincinnati. Cincinnati's in a short week. Uh, you know, De Denver was riding high, and then they hit a slump. So I, I think Denver will get in. Now, the other team, the Jets, you know, they've got to go on the road to play Miami, and then they come back with a short week with Oakland. Um, they have uh, uh, had an excellent season, and it, it's, it's amazing when you look at them because offensively they're a short-passing team. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they will take some shots deep, and they've done a great job of game-planning people all year. Uh, they're not the most talented group, uh, team of this group, so, um, but I'm going to stick by it. Let's, let's, uh, let's you know, give them some love, and let's give them a shot against Miami on the road. Uh, it'll be a tough one, but... Uh, uh, they've got a shot. And Charlie, when you guys had uh, the number one pick, and obviously you, you worked out all the quarterbacks and stuff, Vince Young, Matt Liner, Jay Cutler. Uh, what has it changed from what you originally thought back then when you were seeing the quarterbacks to what you've seen now as they're playing this year in the NFL? Well, 
We, uh, Charlie, we'll what we had um, is this, is that uh, oh, since we weren't taking a quarterback after we made a decision not to, to, uh, to once we made a decision to you know, keep David Carr, uh, then I didn't spend any time on it after that. Our scouts had different opinions uh, on who they rated number one, uh, and our coaches did too, okay? So in looking at them, uh, because I looked at Liner in college, I looked at Young in college, I never looked at Cutler except in the Senior Bowl. And I've looked at all three of them here in the NFL. So with uh, Liner, I don't see anything different. I see a guy who's smart, whose best asset is his intelligence, his anticipation, uh, and his accuracy, though at times people will debate his accuracy, but most people feel he has good accuracy, okay? He does not have a big, big arm, but his arm is good enough. He's not the, uh, a runner, but he can slide in the pocket. So can he go out there and manage a game, be smart with the ball, be productive? Yes, he can. Uh, Cutler, the only time I had seen him was in the senior bowl, and uh, he wasn't all that impressive in the senior bowl, but you have to be careful in a bowl game because it's a guy coming into a new situation, and those aren't the most accurate ways to evaluate him. I watched him in preseason. I watched him in the regular season. Uh, you see all the physical talent. He has the most physical talent of the three guys uh, to be a winning quarterback in this league. He's got arm strength, athletic ability. He's got great intelligence. Uh, at times he'll spray the ball a little bit. Uh, but um, uh, to me, uh, the guy, there's a tremendous upside to him. Uh, which is good. Now, with Vince Young, he had the farthest to go uh, of any of these quarterbacks. He was not in a pro-style offense, very limited in what they asked him to do in the passing game. Took, I don't think he, he may have taken 30 snaps from center his whole senior year, and a lot of those were short yardage situations. Yeah. So, big, big project to come into the league. I think he has improved the most from college to now of any of the three quarterbacks. Now, I still think he has the farthest to go of any of them, because basically right now he's He's winning with running, and in the end, you have to win with passing. He's improved tremendously in passing. That's a credit to his offensive coordinator, Norm Chow, Norm Chow. Um, but he still has a ways to go. So if I was ranking him today, I'd go Cutler one, liner two, and Vince Young three as NFL quarterbacks. Charlie, great stuff. Keep it up. We'll be watching you on Sundays on the NFL Today and checking out with this guy on <laughs> CBS Sports Line on Sundays as well. Really appreciate it, and uh, it's been a, a terrific addition to the show. Charlie, thanks so much. Okay, great. Good talking to you now. Charlie Casserly of CBS Sports joining us here on the Power Performances brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott. And he really has brought some nice yes, insight to the show. Uh, just good substance and an insider's viewpoint. How many times can you hear from a guy that's actually been on the competition committee, served there for 12 years with the NFL, long time yep. uh, front office maven in the NFL with Washington and with Houston and we appreciate Charlie joining us here on the show. All right, well, uh, one of the guys that, uh, not so much this year, but maybe in the future, maybe looking at an NFL roster, one of the guys from the national champion Appalachian State Mountaineers, kind enough to join us on the Power Performances presented by Courtyard by Marriott. He's second team All-American Corey Lynch, safety from Appalachian State. Corey, thanks so much for joining us. We're glad to have you on the show. Congratulations on the national championship. Thank you very much. Right, you know, Corey, one of the things that you got to ask is, you know, you guys get to play in a playoff system, and you know, all the, you, I'm sure you hear all the stuff about the BCS and how everybody yeah. is so against it. What's different for you when you know if you play, <laughs> you actually have a chance to to prove that you are the national champion? Well, first of all, I'd just like to thank uh, Jesus for another great season. But I mean, going through a four-game playoff system, that's that's uh, just a tough thing to do, and you know when you when you get through those four games, you feel your body feels it, but you know that you're the champion instead of some some guy sitting up um, somewhere politically saying that uh, you know this this person is the number one team, this team's the number one team, and then they play, you know. So yeah, Corey, any any sense of how you guys would compete if you did? step up a level in competition. you ever allow your mind to think in that manner? You guys obviously have great chemistry and back-to-back -back championships. Have you guys ever talked about that amongst yourselves? Um, yeah, but uh, there's a lot of political stuff going on with that. But, you know, it would be, it'd be awesome to get more 1A games in there. But, um, you know, right now we're, uh, we're at the top of 1AA, and um, we're still competing with uh, 1A teams. We played in uh, North Carolina State this year, and it was 10-23 uh, to 23 we lost. But, you know, that's the first game. First game, first game of the year. I mean, it wasn't. Um, we we didn't have any chemistry going on, and uh, we played LSU last year, and uh, that was in the middle of the year. We lost twenty-three to zero. 
which wasn't too bad. But uh, yeah, we we have 65 scholarships compared to the normal 85, so it's it's a little a little harder, you know, um, with with the depth and the talent. Right. But um, you know, we we're sticking up there with uh, top top notch 1A teams. All right, Corey. Well, you know, you've brought a lot of popularity in the state of North Carolina to this show here. Uh, and the power performances presented by Corey Art by Marriott. The phones are lighting up to talk to you, and we're going to get to those right now. Justin on line one uh, from North Carolina. You're on the horn with Corey Lynch. Go ahead, Justin. Hey, Corey. Uh, I was just wondering, um, I was at the game, and I was just I watched out throughout the playoffs, and I was just wondering how you uh, how the brace on your arm after your elbow injury um, kind of affected you and how you dealt with it. Well, uh, yeah, I had an elbow injury. I had uh, six screws or five screws and a plate in there. It just uh, the brace was just precautionary. I probably could have played without it, but it just uh, it, it disabled me from uh, fully extending a lot. And uh, you know, my strength at wrapping up and tackling wasn't wasn't all there. And I had a, one, a couple one-handed knockdowns, which I, I should have went up with two, but it's just kind of precautionary. And uh, you know, I, I had some tackles that were missed because I couldn't wrap up or I was a little timid of hitting my arm. So uh, yeah, if I could have could have had that brace off, I'd have probably taken it off. <laughs> yeah, Corey, you might become an actual co-host on this show, the way that people are <laughs> reacting to you, because the calls keep uh, streaming in here. Sissy in North Carolina joins us next year on the Power Performances. Go ahead, you're on with Corey. Yes, we're um, a big fan of Corey, and we've watched him for years and years, and after his two injuries, we keep noticing that he keeps pointing up in every picture, and we're wondering the significance of pointing up in the pictures. Yeah, um, every every time I do anything, I just point to Jesus Christ because if it wasn't for Him, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't have any any of my talent or athletic ability, and that's the only reason I'm I'm playing right now. You know, um, all, all the fame and glory that's that's all good, but um, when you get to point to Jesus Christ for you know something that something that you do, it's just that's the best feeling in the world. That's the best uh, pulpit that you can preach from. Hey, hey, Corey, now you were named second team All American this year. Uh, it's the third year that you've been named an All American, correct? Uh, second year. Second year you've been in an All-American? Yes, so I, next... I was first team last year, but I kind of had the, my injury this year. I missed a couple games, and uh, right. you know, I got second team this year, so it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that at all. For <laughs> next year, your senior year, if you were to be named All-American as well, you join uh, Dexter Coakley is the only uh, Appalachian State guy to be named All-American three years in a row. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. That's what I hear. So uh, that, that's just a great honor to even be uh, my name even be mentioned with Dexter Coakley. I mean, he's a great NFL athlete and uh, you know uh, a famous alumni from from our school. So that would be that would be a great honor for me. You may want to run for office in North Carolina, Corey. <laughs> there are more people that want to talk to here. Martin in North Carolina joins us next year on the Power Performances. Martin, you're on with Corey. Thank you. Corey, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Corey, I want to thank you for your talent being at Appalachian State, but I wanted to ask you today, uh, we've had such a tremendous record at home. Do you attribute that to part being our artificial surface and not having to play on natural turf, which some teams, I think, grow taller to slow our team down? Um, I don't know about that. I just I I think it really is. It's a heart. I mean, I think it's 27 games in a row we haven't uh, lost at home. I've ne I've never lost at home. I'm going in my senior year now, and that'll be a four, f I've played four years already. I got a medical redshirt, you know, and uh, I've never lost at home yet. And it's just basically uh, our fans. Our fans are just uh, an unbelievable fans, and I, I just thank them for being there for us. But uh, you know, we're just we have heart at home. We we do not want to lose at home. So. Hey, Corey, congratulations. Yep. It's a wonderful story. I wish you all the best. Two-time national champion that's going to live with you forever, and thanks for joining us here on the program. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You no got problem. It. Good luck, Corey. Yeah. How about that? That's a breath of fresh air. Yeah, it is. Yes, sir. No, sir. That's right. It's, it's, it's great to see at any point in college athletics, professional athletics, uh, somebody who was, you know, just somebody who who's so thankful to be playing, and you know, he mentioned it. He was injured this year. He had the five screws, the surgery put into his elbow. Came back and still an All-American. Now that's a tough guy. That's a tough guy in Boone, North Carolina. I know you're excited about next week. I'm excited. The I'm best, always excited about the this best show. of two. You you do have a lot of energy. <laughs> the best of 2006, the top 10 power performances of the year. We'll have you on the show with us, holiday style, with the top 10. Put you on a Santa hat. Do you have one? No. You're the prop guy. <laughs> well, you're. The, what did we call you earlier in the I'm day? I'm not sure. I'd <laughs> rather not go there. Folks, it's been a tremendous show here. We wish you a happy holiday season to everybody. Uh, happy Hanukkah. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, Kwanzaa as well is right around the corner. So we wish everybody a happy holiday season. See you next week. Power Performance is presented by Courtyard by Marriott. Ryan Eagle. I'm Jason Horwitz.
Take care. Got to get you a nickname, I think. Stranger.